Hey Sure Callers and Certified Installers, Adam Dutcher here once again and today we're going to be talking about how to use your signal meter properly. Now there are lots of different tools that you're going to be using during your installation process, but your signal meter is going to be one of the most important ones to make sure you have on hand. Now just like any other set of tools, there are some tools that you could be using that are a little bit less specialized. Your phone is going to be like your Swiss Army knife if you will, but you don't want to bring a Swiss Army knife to the construction site as your only tool in your tool bag. You want to make sure that you've also got some specialized tools and one of those specialized tools you're going to want is this RF signal meter. So we're going to talk at length about how to properly use this RF signal meter from SureCall, not only for the site survey process but also for the installation process. We're going to be going over the different modes that the uh, SureCall signal meter is going to be able to provide you with and how to actually turn that into a practical application so that you know what you're doing with your signal meter when you're on the job site and even beforehand when you're deciding how to design your system and which frequencies you're going to want to be trying to cover. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at what actually comes in the box when you're going to get your signal meter. There's a couple of different things we want to make sure that we point out here. Uh, number one, you're going to get this nice little warning uh, paper that says, uh, you know, basically don't plug the booster itself into this signal meter. Uh, that could possibly permanently damage the uh, RF signal meter, so we want to make sure that we're careful about doing that. You also get your <clears throat> user manual here. Give you some uh, instructions about how to use the signal meter, some warranty information on the back. You're also going to get the signal meter itself. It does also come with, uh, with four AAA batteries that are rechargeable that I've already uh, installed and, and charged up. Uh, so we can go ahead and, and turn it on and, and chat about it in just a second. <clears throat> We're also going to get a, uh, an antenna that's going to plug directly into the top of the signal meter, you can see here. We're also going to get the AC adapter. You could also plug directly into a USB port as well in order to be able to charge the meter if uh, you need to go that route. And there is going to be a series of adapters that we want to make sure we kind of talk about. So let's go ahead and take a look at these adapters. So the first one we want to take a look at is this little guy here. And what this is basically going to do is it's going to plug into the top of your signal meter and it will allow you to plug directly into the end of your cable runs um, before you're actually going to install your antenna your indoor uh, either dome or panel antenna and that way you can actually get an idea about uh, what kind of signal you have coming into the end of that cable run. Uh, this is going to help you make sure that you mitigate any problems early uh, that may be resulting from either um, you know poor connections, uh, possibly a cable that is broken on the core uh, or possibly you know just having too long of a cable run and you don't have enough uh, signal getting into the actual uh, antenna itself. Okay, You also have this adapter here which is an SMA male and N male uh, and this is basically going to allow you to plug directly into your outside donor antenna so you can go ahead and get accurate readings about what your actual incoming signal strength is going to be but this is also going to work in tandem with the other two adapters that we had so this one here is going to be uh, N female on one side you can plug that directly into this adapter and now you can go ahead and plug into your um, F male connector on maybe an RG cable, a 75 ohm cable. And we also have this last one here which is going to be your uh, N female and F male connector. So that is what is inside the box. The signal meter itself, it's got an on off switch on the bottom, okay, you can just very easily click it on and off, okay, you'll have your um, battery display here. It'll also let you know what mode you are currently in. Uh, there are actually three different modes that we're actually going to get into later, uh, but for now uh, we're just going to talk about how to cycle between those modes. Okay, so mode number one, the way you're going to cycle, you see how it says here, it says mode select. Okay, I don't know if you can see that really well, but mode select. But there's also a light bulb on here. Um, so basically if you are in uh, dimly lit areas, if you click that once, it will turn on the backlit LED display. Okay. But when you hold it down, it will cycle through your different modes. So you see now we're in mode two, mode number three, okay, and then back to one. So there is also a band select button that we can see here, band select. 
okay? And that is going to allow you to cycle uh, through the available bands. When you uh, push this button, it's going to basically cycle. You'll notice that that top heading uh, that's in mostly black is going to, to change, okay? So this particular meter is going to allow you to cycle through LTE for AT&T. It's gonna be able to have LTE for Verizon and that's kind of a little known fact. Uh, LTE, LTE is actually owned by Verizon and AT&T. Uh, so when T-Mobile and Sprint talk about having LTE, uh, they're either calling another network LTE just because it's the buzzword uh, or they are leasing the space from Verizon or AT&T. We also have cellular, which is where a lot of the 2G, 3G um, data and voice is going over. Um, PCS, another band that is a lot of uh, 2G, 3G voice and data. So a lot of your text messages, um, voice calls, those kinds of things are going over either cellular or PCS. AWS is 4G capabilities for uh, T-Mobile, uh, Verizon and AT&T will sometimes use it as well. Um, but that is a 4G uh, signal band. So the arrows down here are going to allow you to cycle through either frequencies or blocks. So let's go ahead and go, um, uh, mode number one is uh, the mode that will allow us to see the different blocks. So let's choose, let's go ahead and choose <clears throat> a band that has multiple blocks. Let's go to PCS, okay? So you'll notice that it says block A, okay? Now by pushing this arrow, it will cycle through the different blocks. And we can see down there at the bottom on the power side, it is changing. <clears throat> that is your signal strength, okay? So multiple blocks. and it will cycle back to the very top when it gets to the end of the block. Now, different bands have different uh, sets of blocks, okay? So you'll notice that here, you've only got, let's see, um, A through F, okay? No blocks on AT&T or Verizon's LTE. Cellular only has two blocks. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about that, uh, that power level. So you'll see that um, the blocks we have here, the power is what we're gonna be looking at when we're getting our signal readings, okay? Um, decibels is the way that we read power, uh, dB or dBm, decibel milliwatts. Um, the number is always going to be in negative numbers, and the further you get away from the number zero, the worse the signal is gonna get. So on a meter, uh, if you are reading max gain, if down here at the power level it says max gain, that means that the power level is better than a negative 40 dB or dBm. On the low side, uh, if the signal meter is reading a negative 110, that's the lowest that the signal meter will be able to read. Okay, so if you're seeing a negative 110, it could be a negative 114, it could be a negative 120. Uh, and so, you know, we, uh, we want to kind of be aware that if we're getting that negative 110, um, that that's the lowest that the signal meter will be able to go. I want to make sure you know what to expect when using this meter. The one thing that you can definitely count on uh, when you're working with the signal meter uh, in, a, in an actual true life application is going to be fluctuation. Uh, the numbers are constantly going to be moving and they're usually going to be moving a lot. And uh, really the big reason for that is because the radio waves outside are constantly fluctuating. The radio waves that are around the uh, antenna are going to be fluctuating, okay? Uh, so that's something to kind of expect. Uh, it's not necessarily that the signal meter is going wacko or whatever. Uh, it just means that the radio waves are fluctuating between strong and weak signal uh, and you're seeing that displayed in real time on your RF signal meter. Okay, so let's talk about those modes real quick. So mode one um, is going to show you the signal strength of the different blocks that are available in the selected band on the RF spectrum. Okay, we'll talk about why that's important a little bit later. Mode number two is going to show you, um, it's going to allow you to see the strength of a single frequency in the band. And as you kind of cycle through, um, it goes in about five megahertz increments. Uh, and that's usually a lot more information than you are going to probably need, um, but it is available for you uh, if you do need to see that much detail. 
All right, mode number three is gonna be where most of your initial site surveys are gonna derive their readings from. This particular mode, mode three, displays the signal strength in the middle of the band that's selected. Um, so it's gonna give you a great general idea for what the signal level is. All right, so now we're gonna uh, try to talk about carrier specificity. Um, now, the signal boosters themselves, they don't necessarily care who the carriers are. They are what is called carrier neutral or carrier agnostic. Uh, and so, you know, that, that may be well and good for, you know, multiple carrier uh, representatives inside of the building, um, but it may not necessarily work for your customer. Maybe your customer does have a corporate account for a specific carrier and they want to make sure that that particular carrier is uh, represented inside of the building. So how can we try to accomplish that? Well, the first thing we need to do is we need to figure out wh who the carrier is that the uh, customer specifically needs, and we also need to figure out what uh, the signal strength is for the blocks that that carrier is on to make sure that we have enough signal to really be able to work. And we'll talk about the tool that we're going to use in order to find the different blocks that the carriers are on in the area. But for now, let's talk about the mode that we're going to be using for that. So this is going to be mode number one. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to go to the specific carrier. Let's say that maybe it is um, AT&T. Uh, and after using the tool that we're going to show you in just a second, we find out that block A is um, that particular carrier. Um, and so, you know, let's say that maybe T-Mobile is block B. If block B has a really crappy signal, then it may not necessarily matter a whole, a whole lot. So when you're doing your site survey, uh, and we're going to have a video uh, later that's going to be, you know, conducting a site survey from start to finish, uh, it's really important to make sure that you get the signal strength readings from all of the available blocks on the available bands. So you can go back uh, and figure out which carriers are on which blocks and you can find out if you have enough signal to be able to uh, work with those particular carriers. Okay, uh, so as you cycle through, you'll be able to see, um, you know, the different blocks. Uh, and that way, if you've got really great signal for that particular carrier, you can go ahead and let your customer know, yeah, we are, we're, we're good to go uh, with uh, suggesting um, a SureCall product for you. All right, so this is what I call the spec map tool. Uh, I'll go ahead and put the, uh, the URL at the bottom of this video here so you can go ahead and check it out yourself. It's a really fun tool to use. It's basically going to show you a, uh, a picture of the nation and it will allow you to choose different carriers to figure out which blocks they're using throughout the nation. Uh, in different areas of the country. So uh, over here where it says choose a band, we're not going to do anything as as um, grand as choosing a band. Uh, we're going to go by carrier because that's what we're trying to figure out. We're trying to figure out which blocks the carriers are using throughout the nation so we know which blocks to check for if our customer has a carrier specific need. So pick a carrier. We're just going to pick, uh, let's do, it says the big four here, let's do AT&T, first one there. And now we get to go down and we get to choose which block we want to take a look at. Okay, so if we want to look at for cellular A, which is what we were looking at before, okay, it's going to show throughout the nation which uh, uh, counties, which areas are using block A uh, for their voice and 2G, 3G data. Okay, so we can see that all this blue stuff here is going to, is going to be um, block A. Okay, if we choose cellular block B, it'll change it up, right? So there's significantly less block B available throughout the nation uh, for AT&T. We want to look for AWS. Let's take a look. A couple of little pockets every here and there, okay? But once again, as we had said before, LTE is owned by AT&T and Verizon. So let's look on their actual bands and see where they've got that, um, that LTE. Okay, so LTE we can see throughout the nation here, okay, and you can go ahead and, and move it over, you can actually scroll in if you wanted to, alright, so if we wanted to look at maybe another carrier, let's say we wanted to take a look at Verizon. And so like I said before, you know, typically the, uh, the towers are not owned by the carriers. They're usually owned by a third party. Uh, and sometimes the carriers can't get the same blocks uh, that they have throughout the nation uh, all in the same, um, you know, on the same uh, uh, frequencies. So um, sometimes they have to kind of diversify. So they may be cellular A or B. I think that, uh, let's see, let's go, let's see if they've got anything in PCS. All right. 
So PCS, not really a whole lot, right? And so these are going to be significant because as you're doing your site survey, uh, as you're recording your signal strength on your signal meter, uh, you really want to make sure that you're getting those accurate readings for all of these blocks so that when you go back and you take a look at this uh, tool, you can figure out, okay, well, I didn't really have a really good signal. I had a negative 102 for, you know, PCS on the F block. Um, but if you're here in, you know, um, the Bay Area in California, there, there's really no PCS on block F for Verizon anyway. So that doesn't really matter a whole lot. Um, it may matter for some of the people that are, you know, maybe not using that specific carrier, um, but you always want to make sure that your customer is happy. You want to make sure that you always cover the boss's office um, as a rule of thumb. So make sure that your customer gets taken care of with the carrier that they need. And that's why it's such a, a need to have a signal meter instead of just using your cell phone, because if you limit yourself to a specific carrier, you may be seeing great or poor signal that is that doesn't really matter to your customer. All right, so here we are at the actual booster itself. We're going to be talking about how to uh, actually plug the signal meter into your outside antenna from the booster site uh, just to make sure that you have enough signal coming into the booster. So as you can see here, we're in mode 3, um, and we're going to be looking at the cellular band, which once again is mostly 2G, 3G stuff. Uh, and so we have just our regular paddle antenna on here now, uh, but we're going to actually plug directly into the uh, the outside antenna. We're going to be using that connector that goes from, uh, from SMA to the N female. Um, because the connector on the end of the coaxial cable is going to be end male. So let's go ahead and, uh, and do that. All right. Now you always want to make sure you don't over tighten the connector um, because it's quite possible that you could either break the pin uh, or just uh, end up with a, a bad connection. So I'm going to unplug on the outside port and then we're going to go ahead and screw this directly into that um, that coaxial cable all right so now we're all plugged in okay and uh, when we're looking at our rf signal meter now we're seeing um, about a negative uh, you know uh, negative 45 uh, so we got about 20 db of difference between what was going on in here which before it was about a negative 68 now we got about a negative 45 uh, so that's really really good signal getting into the booster uh, you can also use the same technique at the end of your cable runs before you're putting your indoor antennas in uh, just to make sure that you're getting either max gain uh, or as close to that negative 40 as possible because you know you really want to make sure that you account for the amount of loss that's going to happen coming out of your antennas um, and going into the air. So if we were using our signal meter and we wanted to actually plug it directly into the outside donor antenna, uh, we're going to be using the connector that goes from the SMA male to the N male connector. Okay, uh, that's because all of the donor antennas uh, have N female connectors on them. And we'll go ahead and show you how that actually works. Okay. All right. And so what we're going to be using today is the brand new signal catcher window mount donor antenna uh, and so you can see here it does have an N female connector on it so we're going to go ahead and plug this directly into the signal meter just kind of showing you the process of how to go ahead and, uh, and get this plugged in okay all right always make sure that your connections are tight enough but not so tight that you're going to break the uh, pin on the inside of this connector Okay, and it's as easy as that. So you would then place this onto the window. Uh, you would see what kind of improvement you get, what kind of incoming signal you get. That's, that's basically the process. So you're, once again, we're always trying to make sure we get a signal strength between about a negative 45 and a negative 95 dB. Uh, so that's what we're, we're, uh, we're shooting for. So in conclusion, if you have any other questions, feel free to go to surecall.com or give us a call here in our corporate office. I hope that this has been a video that was informative for you, that you understand how to use your signal meter a little bit more. You understand the importance of having this tool in your toolbox, both during your site survey and also during the actual installation itself. Once again, from everybody here at Surecall, I hope you have a great rest of the day and thank you so much for using Surecall to help raise your bars.